So the shoulder season is upon us, which means I can break out a new underquilt that I made uh, this last summer. It's six feet long, has two and a half to three inches of uh, baffling depth. Uh, it is made in a Cairo step uh, baffling. It's interesting in being made almost entirely of Cuban fiber. Uh, the whole package weighs 16 ounces. Of that, nine ounces are the down, one and three quarter ounces is the Cuban fiber, and that leaves five and a quarter ounces for uh, the various kinds of tapes and sealants and shock cords and such. So, if that sounds mildly interesting, then climb into the Wayback Machine with me, and we can go back to July of this year and see how this thing was made. So I finally got some time this summer to work on the next project that I've been waiting for a long time to do, and that's to make an underquilt um, for the late fall and uh, early spring, uh, made entirely out of Cuban fiber fabric. So the stuff that I'm going to use is um, the lightest kind. It weighs a third of an ounce per square ounce. You know uh, Cuban fiber is waterproof and no air will pass through. Most of the quilt will be made of Cuban and most of the connections um, are going to be uh, taped rather than sewn. So what we're going to have is a Cuban shell that's largely airproof and very, very uh, watertight. We're going to have to have a way of getting air in and out, of course. Uh, the stuff that I will use to bond the Cuban pieces together is something that I get from Sailrite. It's called a super basting tape. Um, it's made by 3M. So the basting tape's a double-sided tape. You uh, cut a piece off of that and you have uh, a thin layer, I think it's five millimeters or so, of sticky that's on one side. And now you apply it to where you want to do the attachment. And I'll apply it right on this edge. Press it down, let the bonding start. Then you peel backing off. Sometimes it takes a little care to make sure that you're not pulling the sticky off with the backing. And something else that's a little tricky is that with the Cuban you can hardly see where uh, the edge of the basting tape is. Uh, sometimes you things to help. So then you position what you want to bond over that. Carefully you don't want any wrinkles and press it down. It's quite strong in this direction to pull. Less strong, in fact, in the peel direction. To peel this away, that can happen relatively easily. Things that we need to do when we make this is to arrange so that uh, the forces that exist um, aren't causing any sort of peeling, but we can do that. So, uh, the quilt will be uh, 72 inches long. Um, the underbody is going to be 36 inches wide. Uh, the outer body um, is going to be cut differentially so that we have a three inch baffle. Uh, all of the baffles um, will be made of Cuban fiber and they all will be taped as well. The edges of the upper body and the lower body will be taped. Um, of course, we have to uh, allow air to get in and out and to do that, I'm going to be using some of this 1.1 uh, Marpat Camel. It's, uh, it's uncoated. I mean, air can get in and out of that uh, fairly easily, but it's still uh, good for holding down in. There's a question of how it is that we connect the fabric uh, to the Cuban. To bond the Cuban fiber and the nylon end piece, I uh, took some of the uh, tape and simply taped the faces together, but uh, that would be prone to the tearing phenomenon, so to keep the tearing from happening, ran a stitch along. So uh, the tape keeps these things together and the stitch keeps the tear from happening. The seam will appear on the inside, and so this will be the nice finished uh, seam that we'll see on the outside. Uh, another point is that I didn't do any kind of seaming at all on the fabric itself. Uh, what I used was a hot knife uh, to sear all of the edges so I don't have to worry uh, very much about that. And so we'll see how all that pulls together uh, later. The length of the quilt is 72 inches. The layer that's closest to the hammock is 36 inches. The layer that's on the outside is 3 inches wider on both sides for a depth of 3 inches, and so that comes in at 42 inches. There are 35 baffles, each of them 6 inches long, 3 inches wide, arranged in the pattern shown here. Uh, the gap between successive baffles in the long direction is 3 inches. Uh, the gap between a baffle in the cross direction and the long direction is likewise 3 inches. The gap between baffles that are aligned across the quilt, 
is 8 inches, whereas the gap between baffles that are aligned along the quilt is 12 inches. All of this adds up to a greater resistance for down to move from the edge to the center than from the head to the foot, and that's simply to counter gravity. A roll of Cuban fiber is 54 inches wide, so to get a quilt that's 72 inches long, for both sides of the quilt we need to cut two pieces, overlap them by half an inch, and tape them down. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the size of it. Now we can see what the thing looks like in real life. So uh, right now I've got the layer that's next to the hammock done with all of the baffles pasted on. Uh, so uh, another thing that's mildly interesting to see is how the pattern for the baffles um, is transferred to the Cuban. In fact, all one does is you trace it out on a piece of paper and then you lay the Cuban down on top of that pattern and then you can see right through the Cuban where it is that you should bond one of these things and so you just bond it. And so that's uh, actually pretty straightforward. Uh, it is, however, tedious uh, to do um, all of these things. There are 35 of these baffles and they are only half on. So uh, we'll go back into the shop now and uh, finish up uh, attaching uh, the two pieces to each other and we can see how it is that the end caps um, have been put on this. So let's uh, head on into the workshop and finish this job. So you can see the line from the template right through the Cuban which is quite handy. You don't have to mark the Cuban at all. Just say okay I'm gonna put a baffle there so I'm gonna Attach the baffle with this tape, stretch it out. I want to have the fabric not crumple. Just a little bit before that turns, come in the scissors and cut it. I want to be very careful because I sure don't want to cut that Cuban fiber. And there it is. I'll rub it down. And uh, when I'm ready to attach the other side of the baffle, then I'll pull off the backing and attach it. Here the partially constructed quilt is open. All 35 baffles have been taped to the inside of one layer, and the 35 strips of tape that are needed to attach those baffles to the other layer are in place, with their edges marked on the outside with blue masking tape. Once the beige backing of the bonding tape is removed, the blue edge on the outside will show us where the transparent double-sided tape actually is, making it straightforward to align and tape two layers of the quilt. And now my first baffle is done. And I have uh, 34 of them to go. Many baffle attachments later. We've got the shell taken off the blue tape off of the top that marked where I wanted to put the baffles and I've also attached uh, one side on the far side and we'll now look at uh, some of the steps in attaching the two bodies on the edge on this side. I'm using Aqua Seal which is good for bonding polyurethane based materials. I've used some blue masking tape to create a sharp edge for the sealant on the outside and I'm going to apply Aqua Seal along the edge. I fold it over the upper layer edge by half an inch and will bond the fold to the aqua seal. The sealant comes out on a kind of a bead which you then brush out and finally you align the fold with the edge of the blue masking tape. I lay this out about one foot at a time and just keep going. We've come quite a ways now. The two sides are bonded together. I have one end of this uh, completely attached. I'm going to pay a little extra attention to the corners and the edge to see what's happening. I'd like to know what it looks like inside. Pretty cool there inside. What uh, is left to do is um, the edges on one of the long edges. I put some uh, tape along one side and then folded it over to, uh, to create a channel. Experience with the other uh, underquilt that I've made using Cuban um, has shown that uh, the Cuban channels work just fine. This nylon fabric was bonded to the Cuban using some tape, so there's a half of an inch uh, right there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some tape again to bond it on the fabric side and then on the Cuban side 
like so, so then I will have um, a channel um, at each end. Now whether I use this or not remains to be seen, uh, but now is the time uh, to do that and it will uh, hide uh, that rough edge, uh, if not from view, at least from, from being rubbed. Now the moment I've been waiting for, and that's to put the down into the shell. So uh, the final end of the shell has been closed up all except for um, about one foot where I can put in uh, the down. I have for a couple of years been hoarding some bags of uh, 900 fill down got from, uh, from Spear uh, a couple of years ago in a group buy. Each of these bags has three ounces in it. Uh, by volume, this bag should be taking eight and a half ounces. So if I put in nine, it's actually 3.1 each of these bags, a little more than nine, that'll give me a little bit of over stuff. And so now the moment of truth. Open up the bags, put it in, shake it down, because that's the point of having the Karo step, is to make this step easy. So all the other stuff of the 38 baffles, they're all aimed at making this step easy. I hope it is. So I've undone the top and squashed this down. My hope is that I'm going to open this up and push in this big bulk and have it go other places. On my second bag now, what seems to work is to get the opening of the bag down by one of these chambers that's open and long, you know, with the Cairo step, then there's um, not a lot of long, empty spaces. There's always a baffle that's in the way shortly after running it started, but to get this down out, we want to get it in the place and just sort of stuff it. Well, that works out to be up here near the edge of the quilt. So I'm just stuffing. So the trick seems to be to get the whole bag inside the shell and then to shovel down out of the bag into the chamber, shake it down, make room for some more. Of course it took me the third bag to learn how to do this. But I think Quilt packs down into a bag that's about two liters. You may recognize this as the middle-sized bag in the pack of three uh, Solnitalin bags that you can get from Walmart. So I'll take it apart, put it up. It's handy to flip the hammock over first. So we have to get this all aligned. Shock cord connects into espioners that are at the corner of the hammock. And we can see that the down has clumped down at the ends. It's a consequence of the packing. But even now, it's already decompressing well. Now we'll flip it over and let gravity do its thing. And check up on it periodically to see how much the loft has increased. This now is just five minutes after we've unbundled. And it has a pretty good loft in it right now. Does not take long at all. Let's take a closer look at the corner now. The shock cord comes through a channel, which is just a Cuban folded over. It goes around to an S-beaner that's in the hammock, clips onto the S-beaner, and then back and clips to a line lock. And this, 
This makes it very adjustable quite easily. The line lock is attached to the hammock body just by some Cuban fiber uh, material that's taped to the body. I'm going to take this down, flip the hammock over, disconnect it at the corners. The thing about this quilt is that we need to squeeze the air out of it. The air can only enter and leave at these ends. So what I do is I take the quilt, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then start to squeeze the air out from the middle out towards the ends. This is a lot like deflating an air mattress, in fact. A lot of ways, this is an air mattress. You press it down, and then begin to work it uh, into, the, into the stuff sack. That's all there is to it.